look into that. So this would be the staples. Research um, and the notes that that has been done in creating this document comes from a number of places. Um, first, it came from uh, jo uh, John W. Creswell's second edition of Qualitative Inquiry and Research Design, choosing among five approaches. This is from Sage. Um, so, most of the the discussion on the six forms of qualitative methods research comes from this. But as I said before, um, I've uh, sort of uh, used other um, authors in order to fill the content, right? Um, and obviously, uh, Strauss and Corbin's work on grounded theory has been used to to make sense of this as well. So I've incorporated that into the analysis. So the, um, this section on grounded theory research comes from uh, many different authors. All right. So some of the staples. Um, the first thing to recognize is when can we consider a theory grounded? What does it mean to say that a theory is grounded? Um, and when do we identify the theory as being grounded? So the first thing is, um, a theory is grounded when, and this is a quote, a theory is grounded when, quote, there is a constant interplay between proposing and checking, right? Um, there's a constant interplay between proposing and checking, and I'll make sense of this. We need to recognize that um, grounded theory is an inductive process, right? It's inductively, um, the process of induction is used in order to, and this, is, this should be sort of obvious, right? It's an inductive process. If we are using the theory to make sense of the data, then um, you can see that it's a deductive process. If we're using the data to generate the theory, then we're inducing the theory from what we already have, from the given, right? What's given? The data. And the theory, um, the theory is, is, uh, is developed, is de generated, quote unquote, in the technical term is discovered, D-I-S-C-O-V-E-R-E-D. -E the, the theory is discovered from the data, which, and I, I like that, I like that terminology, right? The idea of discovery suggests that the theory was already there in the data to be discovered. Um, and this is the beauty of qualitative methods research, right? Just as the hard scientist goes into the world and assesses data and discovers the laws of physics or the laws of mathematics or the laws of whatever it might be that they're studying, um, similarly, the qualitative scientist goes into the world and um, interviews and participates in discourse with participants and discovers an understanding of the world. How is it that we function? How is it that we interact with each other? As uh, Strauss and Corbin say, um, there is a constant interplay, right? The interplay between proposing and checking. Proposing and checking. And I'll talk in a bit about sort of the zigzag method. I don't want to jump ahead. But what we're going to do is based on the data, So based on the data that we've collected, we're going to propose. Uh, we're going to propose. We're going to propose and check, right? There's a constant interplay between proposing and checking, right? This interplay between what I'm proposing and sort of verifying whether or not um, the, the propositions that I've made are in fact valid, right? So based on the data that we propose, right? We will check or verify. So we're going to check or verify. I think um, based on the data that I have, here's the data, I think based on the data that I have that this state of affairs happens. Right? So this is to propose, this is my proposition. Right? So we're proposing some theory, but after we've proposed that theory, we need to check whether that theory in fact conforms to the data. Right? We want to make sure, and I said this in, in, I forget which it was, it might have been phenomenological research methodology or, or, um, or narrative research. It is always the case, and this is very, very important, especially for people um, learning qualitative methods research for the first time, that the facts do not conform to the theory. Right? You want the theory 
to conform to the facts. You want the theory to conform to the data. So I propose my theory, but my theory is always subject to be to to verification, to be to be contrasted and checked against the data. Right? So you propose the theory, but that needs to be verified or checked. So you can see it's this cyclical process, right? It's this back and forth process, right? There's there's this interplay, as uh, uh, Strauss and Corbin say, there's this interplay between proposing and checking. This idea of this interplay between proposing and checking is a consequence of um, our unique position as grounded theorists in beginning with the data and inductively um, sort of generating or discovering the theory, right? Once we have a process of um, inductive generation, discovery of a theory, then that theory that is ultimately proposed needs to be checked or verified against the data, right? Why? Because it's the theory that must conform to the facts, not the other way around. You don't take the facts and bend the facts in order, in order for the facts to conform to the theory. That's not what we do. That's not valid research. Okay, so that's, that's the first part. The next thing, number two, is that the theory is grounded in the research data, right? So when we're talking about grounded, um, we will say that the theory is grounded, one, if there is this interplay between what was proposed and the theory being proposed from the data and that proposition being checked or verified with the data, against the data. But also, as I said in, uh, in bullet point two, the theory is grounded in the research data, right? So the theory is grounded in the... You ground the theory in the data. You make reference to the data. When we're saying um, grounded, another way of looking at grounded that, that I think is user-friendly for uh, an extremely introductory account is to think of making an appeal to the data. There is a concept within um, sort of theory, uh, and the concept is known as an appeal to authority. Right? You, you're making an appeal to authority. So if I don't know something or if I want to validate my research claims, I make an appeal to um, authority. Someone who published, for example, I would say, as Creswell said in his book on page XYZ, dot, 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 this claim that Creswell makes justifies my claim, dot, 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 dot. I'm making an appeal to authority. In grounded theory, um, if we have the data here and we use the data to generate the theory, then any time I'm attempting to make an appeal, right, the appeal that I'm making is back to the data, right? I'm making an appeal to the data, which means that I'm making appeal to something that is foundational, something that's solid, something that, that, um, that I can use as a reference, as a form of reference, and that form of reference is always going to be your data. Right? So the data demonstrates, based on X number of research participants, interviews, the data demonstrates dot, 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 right? Because the data demonstrates dot, 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 that my theory of X is, is justified, right? You justify the theory based on the data, not the other way around. It's not to say that one's right and one's wrong. It's just a different interpretation, a different mode, not interpretation, a different mode of um, conducting qualitative methods research.